What is going on guys and girls? Flock of Cranes here coming to you with the 2012 Game of the Year list. These are my top 10 picks for 2012. That means they are my choosing and my everything. They aren't wrong. These are my opinion. If you think there's a better game out there for this slot, please tell me and I can surely give you my opinion on that game. At number 7 we have Sleeping Dogs. Really great game. I enjoyed it. One of my favorite games of 2012. It was done by, who was it done by? Square Enix? Yes, it was done by the lovely, lovely, lovely Square Enix. Nice story. It had a very nice length to it. Um, the morale based system was very nice, but you was, you know, it was really kind of hidden between the cop and triad kind of morale based system. It was really hidden. Um, you really couldn't figure out when you were going to supposed to fight people and when you were allowed to have guns. But when you weren't always beating people's teeth in and fighting, you could just sit back and enjoy a good guitar solo with a bit of karaoke with some hot women around you. Um, the fighting system in this game was very fluid and very nice. I enjoyed it a lot. There wasn't many glitches to it. The environmental takedowns made it very gory and very brutal for everyone watching, which made a great game to play. Um, the, brutal, the brutal gory takedowns were pushed to the limit by Square Enix. They wanted to see how far you could go with the environmental takedowns and how bloody and gory they could get with this game. And I think they actually pushed the limit and pushed that line a little farther than anyone has ever gone before. You could throw people into, you know, fish tanks like this, like giant fish tanks, and you could throw people into ice chippers and, you know, run them over with tracks. It was just, it was gory. They, they got gory all the time. Um, the free running technique was very, was a new style that I liked, um, but it wasn't there long enough that, you know, it made a great difference in the combat. So it really wasn't that big of a deal. Um, the twists and turns between the story made for a very interesting kind of story, but it was nothing that didn't push the line too far. Um, so you did keep with the story and, you know, you stayed with it pretty evenly, but it wasn't too, you know, outrageous that kept everyone, you know, on their toes. Um, all the characters in this story, you know, kind of have like a, uh, everyone on the triad side is kind of, you know, a mass murder and they all kind of freak out and they all have, you know, their moments of, you know, I'm going to freaking kill you because they're all homicidal idiots and they want to just massacre you with guns and rip your fingers off. Um, but other than that, the opposite is the cop side. They're all very well mannered, most of them at least, and they all, you know, want to just get the job done. Um... Wei Shen, he actually is kind of a player player. He's got many girls. You meet up with many girls through the game uh, between nightclubs, and you have all kinds of buffs that you can get through massage parlors. Mm, massage parlors. And there's all kinds of, you know, like noodle shops that you can eat and clothing, like RPG style, where you can change your clothing and change your look and load out and all that. All kinds of good stuff. But other than that, it was really a great game for 2012. Um, but. Seeing as how 2012 wasn't a game, wasn't a year for great games, this one did hit it out of the park. But I don't think that it hit it out of the park so bad that when later games came out in the year, it standed out so far. Um, that's why I feel it is locked into number seven. Really, the combat was really its only strong point. The combat and uh, it's driving. You have a lot, a lot of driving to do. There's you have a lot of waypoints between chapters and stuff, so that kind of drags it down where you have to drive everywhere there's no real fast travel system where you can just get to where you need to go immediately that's why i feel it's locked out at number seven coming in at number six we got silent hill downpour really a great 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 horror game not many people covered it i didn't cover it but this game made me want to cover more horror games for myself and on my channel because this game was such an amazing thrill for me I had such a blast doing it I just I could not even stop playing it I was gonna do it on my channel but I was already like 70% through it and I didn't think I was that far into it um, the storyline is kinda short if you just play through it real quickly it is kinda short you can get through it if you don't do any side missions or anything it's really short um, the scare factor there's a lot of jump scares in it and really it was a great game overall um, Really, the only problems I had with it were the police car when you're actually in-game. Really, if you think a police car is safe, think again. It's not safe. It's going to lead a bunch of enemies to you, and it's going to... Uh, sirens go off, and it's just... It makes everything has it. Um, the side quests aren't really necessary to the main storyline, but they are very helpful. They make, you know, they fill in some blanks, and it keeps the place, that area, a little bit safer than others. And it's it really is enjoyable to play, you know, and do all the little side quests, and 
try to figure out the puzzles that are inside it, and it makes it a great time. Um, the morale-based character actions between like uh, Murphy and the cop, and Murphy and you know, I don't even remember what the taxi, not the taxi, but the train driver is, and. The morale based kind of system kind of depends on how you want to play the game and the ending is affected by it, which kind of is dumb because there's only like two or three scenes that are affected by the ending itself. So I think they're kind of a waste in moments, so if you miss, if you screw it up and that's not what you want to do, then it's, you know, it's kind of screwed up. Um, really, The Other World and The Void are really great, great features that were added in this one. I had a blast fighting The Void, well, not fighting it, you can't really fight The Void, you just kind of have to run from it. And it Kind of makes it, you know, a little bit more scary because you can't face it. You have to just run and go for it. Um, but the other world was very well designed and very well cinematic. I, I just loved the look of it. I love the feel of it, and it made for a really great touch and tone to the game from the raininess and, you know, the fall autumn area of the game where Silent Hill takes place. I thought it was a very well done area, and it was one of my favorite areas of the game. Um, it kept. It was very very entertaining all the way through the game. So I didn't have. I didn't really get bored. I was always on the edge of my seat, always on the tip of my toes, nail-biting suspense all the time, which made it very fun, very, very, very fun for me, and I enjoyed it a lot. I'll be doing a lot more horror games because of this game on my channel, and probably some that aren't really new, but ones that I want to play, and that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm not going to be playing games that are, you know, are new. I'll still hit the new titles and stuff, but I won't be like, okay, new title came out, got to do it, new title came out, got to do it. This game has really opened my eyes to what games can be, and I'm just, I loved it, and I loved, you know, the music and the enemies to it, and all the kind of puzzles and stuff to it. It made a great game, and I had a blast. Um, the storyline was a bit confusing, but it wasn't so confusing that it made it irritating. That's why I feel it's locked out at number six. I'm Flocker Cranes. Hope you guys enjoyed this. More coming soon, and I'm out. Keep right on going.